Continuing with the derivative series, we're going to be looking at some more basic rules. And first off, we have the power rule. So in the first example, we have 4 times t to the third power. And how would you find the derivative of this? Well, you're going to want to do two things. One of which would be to bring down this power out to the front and multiply by whatever constant you have out here, which in this case is a 4. So you have 3 times 4, which gives you a 12. And the next thing you want to do is reduce this power by 1, and which is basically subtracting 1 from the power. So it's 3 minus 1, which gives you a 2. And so ultimately, the derivative of that will be 12 times t to the second power. And this is how you would basically solve any derivative power rule. So now let's look at another example. Here you have x to the second power. And this, if you look closely, you see that there isn't a constant, but that, that's because the constant is 1. And so although it's there, it's not written out. Anyway, to find the derivative of this, you're going to want to move the 2 over to the front again, multiply by 1, which is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. And then you want to reduce the power by 1, which is 2 minus 1, which gives you a 1. And again, here the power is written out because it's a 1, and so we naturally leave that out. So the derivative of this is 2x to the first power. And for the last example, we have... 5p to the first power, which is, again, the power is there, it's just not written out. So anyway, you're going to want to do the same thing once more, you know, bring the power out to the front, multiply by the constant, which is 5, so you have 5 times 1, which is 5, and then you reduce the power by 1, so it'll be 1 minus 1, which gives you a 0. So now you have p to the 0 power, and p to the 0 power is going to be equal to 1. And really, anything to the zero power is going to be equal to 1. So you can try to you know, put it in your calculator. You'll see that, say, for example, 5 to the zero power is going to be equal to 1. And 7 to the zero power will also be equal to 1. Anyway, moving on, we see that 5 times 1 is equal to 5. And that would be the derivative of this. And really, what's interesting about this last example is that anytime you have a constant times a variable raised to the power of 1, you can always bet that the derivative is going to be the constant because the variable becomes a 1 due to the fact that it's going to end up being raised to the power of 0. And then you will multiply that by the constant. We know the constant times a 1 is going to always give you a constant back. And so that's it for the power rule. And let's move on to the next rule. Now let's look at sums and differences. And this basically combines different rules we talked about so far. So looking at some examples here, we have 12 times x to the first power plus 2 minus 3 times x to the second power. And to find the derivative of this, you're going to want to find the derivative of each part individually. That is, you find the derivative of this first, then this, and then this. And so for this one, we're going to use a power rule. And it's really similar to the example we just talked about because you have a constant multiplied by a variable to the first power. And so what you want to do is um, move the power over to the front and multiply by the constant, which is 12, and so you get 12. And then you have the variable raised to the power of 1. And when you reduce 1 by subtracting 1, which so is 1 minus 1, you have a 0. And any term into the 0 power is a 1. So this x becomes a 1. And 12 times 1, again, is equals to 12. And again, if you don't get this part, just refer back to what I just talked about above. And then for the second part here, you have 2. And so for this, we're going to use a constant rule, which we talked about in the previous video that we're going to have linked down below. But anyway, to find the um, derivative of a constant, you just simply say it's 0, because the derivative of a constant is always going to be 0. And so this is a 0, but we don't show it in the answer, though. And then for this one, we're going to use the power rule again. And so you move the 2 over to the front, multiplying it by the constant, which is negative 3 in this case. And so you have negative 6. And then you want to reduce the power by 1, which is 2 minus 1 equals to 1. And so ultimately, the derivative of this is going to be 12 minus 6x to the first power. And now let's look at another example. Okay. 
and so with this one we're going to find each part individually again and for this we're going to use a power rule because you have a power right here so you say negative 8 bring it to the front multiply by the constant which is an implied one although it's not written but again remember it's there so it's negative 8 times 1 which gives you a negative 8 and then you reduce negative 8 by 1 which is basically subtracting 1 from negative 8 that gives you negative 8 minus 1 which is negative 9 and then for this part here we're going to use the natural log rule which again I talked about in the previous video which will be linked down below but for this we're going to find the derivative by saying 1 divided by the variable which in this case is r and then you multiply the constant given and so that's negative 3 times 1 divided by the variable which is r so when you go to simplify this is already simplified so you don't have any problem there but this one though you say negative 3 times 1 gives you negative 3 and divided by the r and so that's it for this sums and differences and let's move on to the last part yeah i just quickly want to show you how you can go about writing a function so you can easily find the derivative because there are some cases where you'll be given functions in the format that require you to to rewrite it first before you can find the derivative like in this example right here so here you're given 4 divided by t to the first power plus 2 divided by t to the second power minus the square root of t and so in order to find the derivative of this you first of all want to write it into something like this so you can have powers and use the power rule ultimately you want to get rid of the fractions and the square roots and to do that, you want to move the variable from being at the denominator to being at the same level as the numerator. And when you do that, you find that the numerator becomes a constant. And also, you see that there's going to be a sign change because initially you had t to the positive 1 power and t to the positive 2 power. But when they become at the same level, you find you have t to the negative 1 power and t to the negative 2 power. And that's how you would do it, do it for the fractions and for the square roots you're simply going to make it one half because really whenever you take the square root of a number you're really um, raising it to the one half power and so now you have powers and you can use a power rule to solve this and so again you will find the derivative of this individually and so for this one you move the negative one half to the front multiply by the constant which is four and so you get negative four and then you want to reduce the negative 1 by 1. So say negative 1 minus 1 gives you minus 2. And you do the same thing for this one where you move the negative 2 to the front and you multiply by the constant. So it's negative 2 times positive 2 gives you a negative 4. And when you reduce negative 2 by 1, so you say negative 2 minus 1, it gives you a negative 3. And with this one, you do the same thing as well. Just move the one half power to the front and multiply by the constant, which is negative one. And again, the one is not written, but it is still there. So it's one half times negative one, which gives you a negative one half. And when you reduce one half by one, so that is one half minus one, you get a negative one half. And so that's how you would go about writing a function so you can find the derivative easily. And that is it for this video. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you want. And also you can share the video with someone that might find it helpful. And also leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll reply to them. Thank you.